So this is the episode that everybody has been talking about. Apparently this is the biggest fan service episode of Dragon Ball Super right now. And from the looks of it, it has a lot of highs and probably quite a bit of lows here and there in my opinion. And honestly, I don't see what's all the hubbub, but it seems to be something worth checking out. What's up guys, it's your boy the Supreme B-Man, and I am here once again to do a lovely Dragon Ball review of episode 100. Episode 100, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to episode 100. Congratulations to Toei and, you know, Toriyama and, you know, Toei. Toriyama and all of the animators and all of the voice actors I give mad props mad respect to everybody who's been working on this thing ever since the whole Gods of Destruction movie kudos to you guys for bringing it back kudos to you guys for giving us some really good awesome entertainment it's 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 a fun ride and I hope that there's prospects through all of this and hopefully there'll be obviously there's going to be more episodes but i hope for nothing but the best for this show because i am a fan and you know i've been a fan since the first dragon ball series and ever since then i've always been on board here and there um i have you know ran into a few episodes that i didn't like and then there was some stuff that was kind of inconsistent but overall, at the end of the day, it's all fun. But that does not save episode 100 100%. Because there are a few things here and there that I liked. And there are some things that I didn't like. So let's just jump into this episode and not diddle-daddle. First up, two combatants get eliminated by Koba. Kaba, um, not Koba, Kaba. And Kaba challenges Vegeta to a one-on-one -on -one fight at the very beginning. Not at the very, very beginning of the episode, but it's kind of the main thing right now because Vegeta is pretty much getting attacked by just about everybody who is from Universe 6. And right now, Vegeta can't get a breath uh, of air or any space, but obviously this is the Universe Tournament that involves, you know, pretty much eight universes in total. Right now it's seven, considering Universe 9 has been erased. So, Kaba shows up, and Kaba kind of shows off how strong he's gotten for, like, maybe a few seconds. He eliminates two guys, one from Universe 10 and one from Universe 3 which they get obviously eliminated and then we jump cut and move on to hit who has you know pretty much obviously has the upper hand against an opponent um, from universe I think it was three one of the robot androids that had the spin top attack that apparently can pretty much eliminate everybody which obviously that attack was not going to help any it was just a gimmick that obviously had a huge flaw and you know luckily hit was able to find it and pretty much eliminate that guy from the tournament um the next thing is here goes the big deal pretty much the biggest part of this entire episode it's it's not the kaba stuff it's not the hit stuff heck you know universe 11 doesn't even show up until towards the end of the episode this entire episode is dedicated to Brolina, a.k.a. Kale, a.k.a. Female Broly. This entire episode is dedicated to her and nothing but her. Her and Khalifa, that is the two female Saiyans of this entire tournament right now. And so they've been hyped up ever since they arrived in earlier episodes before the tournament got started and you know obviously kale it was meant to be this female broly and don't get me wrong i love the idea i was kind of cool with it and everything 
but I started seeing some things that kind of like really kind of got to me a little bit here and there because it kind of makes no sense, especially when it comes to power scaling and comes to, you know, maybe it's because of the raw power that Kale has when she turns into her female Broly mode. I don't know. And as for Khalifa, I don't know if, you know, she, her her evolution right now in the Super Saiyan stuff is way too fast, way too quick, which is pretty ridiculous because imagine having to have watched Dragon Ball Z and had to, for the first time, watch Goku fight Frieza and the stuff that he went through and the amount of punishment that he had to take fighting Frieza finally getting him by the spare bomb only to find out that it was unsuccessful and then watching his best friend get killed right in front of his eyes and then Piccolo getting knocked out unconscious by Frieza's death beam and literally it ticked off Goku the amount of training that he's done ever since he fought with Raditz all the way up to that very point and finally reaching the level that Vegeta had speak of, the, of the legendary Super Saiyan status that he held on to this very day. And I honor that moment. That moment right there was one of the biggest moments in Dragon Ball Z. Any Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball fan can tell you right here and right now, that was a big moment. That was a huge moment. And then after that, it was Trunks from the future and then there was Vegeta and then after that later down the road it was Gohan and it was a sight to behold and then in the Majin Buu series it was younger Trunks and Goten that obviously let you know right here and now that the whole Super Saiyan gimmick was slowly going to die out because you know these two little Rugrats achieved an, a, a skill an ability a transformation that took a lot of heart, a lot of blood, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, a lot of everything. And yet they were able to learn this in, in about a few minutes or so. Which is ridiculous. It's pretty crazy. But I'm sorry to go on that little rant about it. But that that just comes to the point. Khalifa has not quite earned Super Saiyan status. Kaba, I can understand. Maybe. Just a little bit. I give him a little break. I mean, he was up against Vegeta. Vegeta talked about turning into a Super Saiyan and what it needed to take to turn into one. And when he finally figured out how to do it, he decided after their little skirmish in the first tournament between Beerus and Chapa, Cop, I mean, um, Champa, um, obviously he was going to work on the Super Saiyan ability and eventually come to a point to where he was able to master the Super Saiyan transformation. In some ways or another, he was able to held on you know hold his on and master super saiyan to hit the best of his ability and then of course khalifa and kale showed up and that's when the whole super saiyan thing kind of got out of control it kind of got crazy i think khalifa's transformation or evolution is a little bit too wild for me um i think she needs to slow down and i think really all she needs to do is train with that transformation one each transformation one at a time rather than rushing to turn super saiyan one two and i was kind of scared that she was about to go three which kind of scared me a little bit you know what i mean which is pretty ridiculous because you know even going to two is a little bit much because gohan had to endure a hell of a lot of crap to even get to that level that his father couldn't even do the first time so it's pretty crazy so i just think that khalifa and kale's evolution is pretty crazy but kale i give her a break because she's supposed to be this female broly trope type of character this fan service character that everybody has been asking for since the first broly movie arrived and everybody's been wanting broly to be canon even i to a certain extent wanted broly to be canon but you know honestly in my opinion i like the character i like what he did in the movie i like his quotes i love you know how big and buff he is and how destructive he can be he's like an incredible hulk of dragon ball z but I didn't like his story because it was kind of stupid, you know, him crying as a bait, you know, getting upset that Goku was crying in the uh, baby nursery 
back on planet Vegeta and then from then on he had this pure hatred for Goku which is pretty freaking stupid because how did you even know it was Goku from the gecko so I you know that's just me saying you know what I mean um, so Kale's transformation was kind of cool but it was still kind of stupid and it was pretty ridiculous and here's the other thing it's it's not only just super saiyan it's super saiyan god becoming just a a normal regular super saiyan transformation now because even legendary inexperienced kale was able to hold her own against a super saiyan god so the word god itself g-o-d is not even worthy anymore in this show like it's pretty crazy so how is it that Goku's gonna fight a guy like Jern anytime soon in Super Saiyan Blue how is that even I mean sure maybe he wasn't using his full power if he had done K.O. Ken but this is getting redundant and kind of getting crazy because first it was 17 that was able to deflect Goku's Kamehameha wave no, not even before 17. It was Majin Buu that was able to hold his own against Goku. Then it was Krillin. Krillin! Krillin of all people that was able to even hold just a minor few seconds of Goku's Kamehameha wave at Super Saiyan Blue. And then it came to 17, which I don't even know what his power level is right now, which is pretty crazy. So I don't even understand where the power scaling goes. I hope that maybe maybe somebody down in the comics maybe one of you guys might know how to explain this because I think this is pretty crazy and I understand fan service I understand the fans want something then the guys that are making the anime give it to you the same thing goes for any cartoon or any animation of any kind if the fans want something from your animation you give it to them and that is thus called fan service you know what I mean and that's what they gave us throughout this entire episode she did everything that Broly did from the movies from the you know calling out Goku's name over and over again to thrashing him all over the place to even walking through yet again his Super Saiyan blue Kamehameha wave which is pretty crazy and then her jumping on top of a pillar and just going berserk mode and throwing out energy blasts one after another in the skirmish of it all she eliminates a uh, a combatant from uh, I think it was universe 10 and then right after her rage mode she eliminates a universe 11 pride trooper who decided that he was going to try to take her out but you know no prevail to him and afterwards which is let me tell you something right here right now this is probably the only freaking moment in this entire episode that I actually murked out this was the only part of the episode that I actually really gave a damn about and it was Jern. Jern unfolded his arms and told his troop that he was going to take care of the situation. He jumped into action. He literally knocked Kale into the sky, throwing an energy beam into her gut, and then commanding that energy beam to go even further away from the tournament arena, and then causing it to explode in the distance. And instantly, Kale was defeated. He had done what Goku couldn't do. He had done what everybody couldn't do, which is pretty freaking crazy. I don't, this Jern character, this guy, I've, I've been hyped up. I'm more hyped up for him than I'm hyped up for bro female Broly. I'm more hyped up for Jern than I am Khalifa. I'm not on board with, I mean, I'm fine with the female Super Saiyans. I'm fine with the female Saiyans, just themselves. Um, but I think there's just too much hype behind them. A lot of people on YouTube that I've seen reviews and whatnot of this episode, you know, obviously they're going to murk out. Obviously they're going to love the Broly stuff. They're going to love the Khalifa stuff. They're, they're going to love all that stuff. For me, I'm kind of a little 50-50 with it. And it kind of like stretched it out a little too much. And that kind of did a little much for me. And it was too many questions. Too inconsistent stuff. The Super Saiyan God getting completely thrown around by a legendary Super Saiyan. Who, you know, let's be real. Broly was strong enough to handle, you know, uh, 
about what was it four super saiyans and a namek you know what i mean which i understand those four saiyans were only at super saiyan one um in broly returns gohan was at super saiyan 2 i guess i don't know i'm not for sure but you know he was able to hold his own but broly was still a little too strong but no matter what, without a shadow of a doubt, Broly was defeated by Kamehameha Wave and sent launching into the sun or wherever he ended up going. It didn't matter at the end of the day. But, you know, it's a little bit much to say on what the power level scaling is for Super Saiyan God against a legendary Super Saiyan. Because we don't even know how strong legendary Super Saiyan is um, by any means. But I can see that Jern is a whole nother different you know a whole different tier a whole different type of warrior so you know i'm glad that jern came in eliminated well he didn't eliminate kale which is kind of sad i kind of wish that he had eliminated her rather than just knocking her unconscious i would have preferred that over you know just him blasting her away so i didn't it didn't matter to me but at the end of the episode jern and goku squared off and they looked at each other and it kind of teases that they're going to fight but in the next episode from the previews we're not going to get that obviously the pride troopers are going in for an attack so they're going after everybody at this point universe seven universe six four three two um you need to watch yourselves and as for universe 10 for at uh, towards the end of this episode they lost half of their team so they only got five combatants left and so i think those five are going to get eliminated in the next episode and we're going to see another universe get erased probably either the next episode or the episode after that i'm not for sure but more than likely we're going to see universe 10 get erased um and from then on, it's it's off to the races with the final five universes from then on. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you agree with me or you disagree with me about the whole uh, Brolina, Kale, you know, Khalifa power level scaling type stuff and all the Super Saiyan madness, please leave a comment below. Um, if you liked it, please hit that like button. It sure does help me out. Hit subscribe for more videos just like this and share it with your friends who might be interested in maybe another guy's opinion about the show. As always, guys, it's your boy, the Supreme B-Man, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.